Arizona Superintendent of Public Instruction Diane Douglas is raising concerns over the lack of funding for data systems at the State Department of Education. Douglas says the lack of funding could have severe consequences for public and charter schools throughout the state. We welcome Diane Douglas to Arizona Horizon. Good to see you again. Great to be back, Ted. Thank you. All right, lack of funding for IT systems. What are we talking about here? Well, unlike any other state agency, we have no money in our baseline budget to run the computer systems for the Department of Education, which runs basically every single system education related throughout the state. The last time I was here, I believe we were talking about my Arizona Kids Can't Wait plan and a 5% salary increase for our teachers. Well, if we can't run an IT system, uh, teacher salary decreases will be 100%, and we can't have that happen. You're asking for $17.6 million for this data system. What exactly would that pay for? Well, it's been a system that's been over creation for several years now. It replaces a system that was basically at the end of its life and crashing routinely. We've been working on it. Ten million would pay for the ongoing maintenance to make sure that system stays up and running and supports about a hundred between 100 and 150 other systems that our schools use. And then we need about seven million to to create what's called APOR and CHAR. Those are the systems that actually pay the money out to the schools, $5 billion in state fund and $1 billion in federal funding. So without that, children won't get their free and reduced funding to have meals. I was going to say, if this funding doesn't happen, are we talking about money that should be going to schools and such? not going there? That is exactly what we are talking about. We are talking about basically the defunding of public education in Arizona because we will be unable to get the money to the schools, to the districts, and to the classrooms. How did, how did the agency get to this situation? There was not a recommendation made in the governor's budget to fund this IT program. Um, but I am encouraged that I was able to speak with the governor today, and although we don't have a number and I don't have anything that I can be assured of at this point, we will keep working and keep the lines of communication open to make sure that we're able to get this crucial funding I, for our students. But again, I, I'm kind of wondering how we got here. It seems like it, we just hit a wall. I mean, was this gradually building? I mean, uh, it, we're going from distributing funds to we may not be distributing any funds. I mean, that seems like a pretty steep cliff. We had uh, not quite $8 million in our budget last year, and it's always a bit less than we asked for to realistically finish the projects. And this year, it was zeroed out. Um, I don't understand why. We gonna... were told it, we'd hoped it was an oversight. Uh, we were told by staff it wasn't an oversight. It was a conscious decision. Um, as they look at other areas of the budget, um, I, I really can't explain it, but I am optimistic that we will keep working together to get a resolution if because I, we must. If I'm not mistaken, other agencies uh, got IT update money. Yes. So, other I, The one system, the two systems that I just mentioned, APOR and CHAR, APOR gets money to traditional districts, CHAR to charter schools. Those systems were created in 1999. We have very few children that are even in our system that were alive when they were created. Um, we have agencies that are being given funding that are replacing systems that are a fraction of that age after five or six years, and we're trying to replace antiquated systems. You want $17.6 million. The governor zeroed you out. So let's say he throws back six or seven million, something along. Is that good enough? Are, are, are schools still going to get their money? That is going to greatly hamper the services that we can provide to schools. I mean, one of the reasons that we're asking for this now, I appreciate that the budget is a negotiation and that does take time, but the reality is we are in a market where IT is very hot right now. And would your staff, if they knew they had zero salary on July 1st, would they still be here? I think they'd be looking for other jobs. Yes. And we can't, even if, if we get the funding in May, we've still greatly harmed the system because we'll lose a lot of crucial people that we need to keep there for our children and for our families. With that, with that in mind, how long can the department work with what you got? Well, we have the funding for this year, and we can work with that, but we will be at zero on July 1st. 
which means our systems will shut down, and that doesn't take into account people that may not wait till July 1st to look for positions. As far as people saying, I, Very I'm not going to stick around here. people. Who uh, would roll the dice with their family? You say the governor is listening? We had a discussion today. So that's encouraging. I reached out on Friday and we were able to actually speak today. Um, I'm told there will be some ongoing discussions, um, but we need to know what we can ensure our people of. And, you know, one of the other problems is, that hurts us is that the legislature always passes new bills and often they impact the coding for our computer system like current year funding last year. Right which we had to make that adjustment with no funding to do it. Yeah, yeah they're Those moving the goalposts pieces. and not paying you for the, the new goalposts. Exactly. All right, uh, well, we'll see where this goes, 17.6 million, and uh, that's the magic number for you, I guess. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on this one. I very much appreciate you doing that, and I thank you once again for your time. All today. right, thanks. Good to see you.